to Crow Forest Reviews. So it's that time of year again. The time of year when we look at one of the movies from the Crow Forest Archive in lieu of doing a proper April Fool's Day episode. Although, if you're hoping for In the Attic, sorry, I'm saving that one for next year. But we will get to it eventually. So what are we looking at today? Well, a while back, I made a pilot episode for what had been a planned series of a recreation of CSI with Legos, but it ended up being way too much work for me to keep up with working by myself, so this is the only episode. So, is this a long-lost gem that should have gone to series, or an embarrassing mess that should have been lost to time? Well, let's find out. But spoiler alert, it's the latter. This is CSI LEGO The Miniature Killer Arc. So, for context, this is a recreation of the Miniature Killer Arc from CSI. All seven episodes of the original arc compressed down into one single ten-minute episode. Though, to be fair, there was an awful lot of padding to cut from the original. For more information on that, see my review of this CSI Miniature Killer arc. Which, if you're watching the re-edited version, actually contains some clips from this LEGO special, in order to get around copyright. But anyway, this intro is way too long. Let's just get into it. So the episode opens in glorious standard screen, no less, with this dramatic pan around of the miniature Lego set, which then pans out to reveal that it's inside an even larger Lego set. Then, after an awkward pause that really should have been cut, we immediately cut to the intro, which is actually pretty cool. Not a bad recreation of the original CSI intro although it does kind of ruin the effect that I had to mute the clip for copyright reasons. After that, we get an awkward investigation montage. In dead silence. Wow. I mean, I know I'd have to mute it anyway, but that is awkward. Like, Seriously, I did not mute that song for this review. There is just nothing in the original. I, I know that you watching this would have the same experience regardless due to YouTube's copyright, but no, there is just nothing in the original. At least the opening scene had music, which I then had to mute for the review. I really should re-edit this thing with copyright-free music. Anyway, the awkward montage ends abruptly with a bit of a jump scare, as it's the first actual sound that we've heard in over 30 seconds. In a town in the woods at the top. So cut to this cool montage featuring Jonathan Colton's creepy doll which I'm pretty sure I am allowed to play as long as I make this video Creative Commons. So, if you're watching this, hopefully I remembered to do that. No, for editing, do you do, do that? In a town in the woods at the top of a hill There's a house where no one lives So you take a big bag of your big city money there And buy it but at night when the house is dark and you're all alone There's a noise upstairs At the top of the stairs there's a door and you take a deep breath and try it So the montage goes on for a bit, some parts of it working fairly well and others not as much, and then the song just abruptly cuts off. It's very jarring. And But there actually is a reason for it. 
I just forgot that the montage was cut into two separate halves to make the music fit better. Which, you know, it does, so I could have used better audio editing, but I'm not good at audio editing. At all. Even now. So, you get what you get. So we get some more investigation stuff, still in dead silence, and then once the visuals have progressed enough to fit the music again, the song once again starts up. So you scream and you close the door and you tell yourself it was just a dream. In the morning you head into town cause you wanna go antiquing. In the store there's a strange old man. is actually done pretty well and follows the story arc pretty effectively, though the editing and visuals are pretty stiff and awkward for the most part. Though I do like the bit at the end with the detective munching it. That plot point in the original made absolutely no sense, but the way it came together here was actually pretty cool. You've had enough and you lock the doll in the wooden box. You put the box in the fireplace next to your bag of big Tiny room, there's nothing you can do. Far too late, you see the one inside the box is you. And there's a creepy doll that always follows you. It's got a ruined eye, it's always open. And there's a creepy doll that always follows you. Anyway, we get a quick, awkward close-up of a bottle of bleach, which, if you haven't seen the original, that was a thing. That was a whole thing. And then the episode ends with a pan around the miniature killer's lair, played in this version by the Phantom, and then cut to text reading, To Be Continued, which, spoiler alert, it won't. And that's it! That's the whole episode! So that was the miniature, miniature killer. How was it? Eh, a bit mixed. Some parts of it worked fairly well, other parts really did not work at all well. I need to see if I can re-edit it with some royalty-free music and maybe tighten up some of the editing and maybe make it work somewhat okay. But as it stands, it's not very good. It's not even really watchable. Like, trying to watch this to write the script, it's like, oof, this isn't really watchable. <laughs> but, oh well. Yeah, it's probably for the best that this never went to series. Anyway, that's all I have to say about this one. Tune in next time to see my review of In the Attic. Next time as in next April Fool's Day. You get it. You, you get it, right? You, you get it.